Pie Birds Pie is a home-based bakery offering seasonal fruit pies. We celebrate our place in the ongoing tradition of home cooking, and we're proud to make each one of our pies by hand. Pie Bird Pies was born out of desire for connection and love of pie. Pie is a dessert that embodies community as it is best shared. Kristen Daly, her pronouns are she, her, hers, is a full-time baker for Pie Birds Pie. Her background is in writing and nonprofit development, but the pull of the kitchen was always too strong to resist. When she's not up to her elbows in flour and butter, she can be found in the garden behind a book or out walking our pups, Frida and Norman. Andrea, I'm going to butcher your last name, so I'm... That's okay. It's, it's You say it. <laughs> Andrea Picard. Wait, go ahead. Andrea Picard Street, whose pronouns are she, hers, her, is the creative force behind Pie Birds Pie. All those generously intricate crusts, those are designed and made by her. Andrea's background is in art and writing, and she works full-time in communication and design in addition to baking for Pie Birds Pies. When she's off both clocks, Andrea loves to curl up with a good young adult novel, jam out to country music, and dig into house projects around her 105 year old home. Um, I, that is it. You guys are amazing. And um, I know you've been up early. They were on Iowa Public Radio this morning uh, talking about their business and also offering uh, free pies for a year, a year's worth of pies if you make a donation. So after this, if you're excited about Iowa Public Radio, go make a donation. I don't think the window's <laughs> closed yet. Maybe no, it has, no, but no, you can no, also win no, uh, <laughs> a year's worth of pie. And they also shout out, they have a pop-up on Thursday, this Thursday, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At Ephemera yes. in uh, the East Village. So if you are craving pie after this, you can find them this week. So with that, I'm going to let y'all talk about local sourcing. And I think the spotlight is on. Is it on, Christina, for them? there they are okay wow. take it away awesome thank you so much for the intro Chelsea uh the, today is just so awesome and it's been so great to see so many familiar faces and new faces or names that we recognize um we can't wait to meet more of you in person as time goes on and we're excited to talk to you about uh local sourcing today so we have a little presentation that we put together because I still am in the Zoom office life and I like to have some visuals. So we're gonna share that and kind of go through some main points and the presentation will make it available. If people like wanna refer back because we just have like some lists and stuff in there. And um, yeah, if you have questions, just drop them in the chat or mm -hmm. feel free to like unmute yourself and just speak up. We're happy to answer questions as we go along too. Yeah. And we're definitely, we're going to try to leave time at the end to have a little discussion, answer questions, like um, anything that you folks want to talk about. Awesome. I'm just going to share my screen. Okay. I think we can just skip through these first couple slides since Chelsea gave us such a great introduction. Mm hmm so yeah, so we're, we are Pie Bird Pies and um, we thought we'd start with a little bit of the mechanics of our business. Yeah. Um, Do you need to hear this? I think they can hear us on your computer. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, we did not expect for quite this level of complexity with our presentation. Anyway. We, um, our cottage bakery, we sell through uh, local farmers markets as well as pop-ups and collaborations like the pop-up that Chelsea was mentioning. Mm -hmm. And uh, using as many local ingredients as possible has been a core value of our business um, since before we even started baking. Uh, that's been something that's been really important to both Andrea and I as individuals mm -hmm. and consumers. Um, and that's a value that we definitely bring to our business as well. Yeah, and oh, here we go. So why would you want to source locally besides it being a super delicious choice that you can make for your home business? And that is a slice of, I think it's raspberry rhubarb pie that we made this spring. Mm -hmm. um, 
Carla kind of talked about this, like that our food system really being, or our food community really being like a web uh, that's all connected. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we really see too. I think sourcing locally strengthens local food security as well as the local food network as a whole, like here in Des Moines and um, even like across the state of Iowa. And like I was saying, this was something that's been important to us as individuals for mm -hmm. a long time. And for us as business owners, buying locally gives us a chance to amplify our impact because we're purchasing, purchasing in larger quantities and with greater frequency. Yeah, and we also, you know, we buy some different products as a business than we do as individuals. So it gives us a chance to extend our reach in that way as well. Um, other reasons to source locally, and Carla got at this as well, um, it makes the local economy stronger because your dollars are staying closer to home. I think it's a great opportunity to build relationships with other local and small business owners. Um, and I've loved getting to connect with so many bakers in the group, but this is just a way to even extend that uh, network further. And it's fun to make friends with people who are interested in the same things that you are. And uh, I just think building those relationships make the work really rich, at least for me. Um, and biggest, most important thing that we've seen during the pandemic is it helps to create a more secure supply chain for your product. So something that one will keep talking about this later, but for us, like when we opened in May of 2020, uh, that was when everyone was starting to make sourdough <laughs> bread. And I'm so happy for it because Chelsea's bread is amazing. I'm so mm -hmm. happy for everyone who started making sourdough bread, but I feel like everybody did it at the same time. And for us, like just opening pie bird pies, I was mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, we're not going to be able to get flour to make pie. Like, yeah, I was having I'll some real stress there. <laughs> I will say now that, you know, thinking about it that way, I see we were part of the problem, but, oh, yeah. um, <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not a bad problem. It's just that it's hard to make baked goods without flour. So, um, yeah, so we're going to talk a little bit more about like the, all of the local producers and local sources that we use some, for some of the products that we use in our baking and our business, but that could like very quickly just turn into, we figured that could like very quickly derail this whole conversation. And so we thought we would highlight just a couple of like our main sources and these are also like uh, some of the first relationships we established with the business. And so Kristen's going to talk a little bit about those relationships and like how they, how they first came to be. Yeah. So like we were just talking about with flour, we we're panicking in the beginning of the pandemic, wondering if we'd be able to make enough pies um, mm -hmm. or get flour for them. So I reached out to early morning harvest flour. They're about 45 minutes outside of Des Moines and they grow all of their own wheat and mill their own flour. They are fantastic people to work with. They're family owned. Um, I honestly just cold called them, like introduced myself, talked a little bit. Pie bird pies was like hardly a thing at that point, but uh -huh. I knew that we needed flour and knew that sourcing local was important to us. And they have been, they were, have been really easy to work with. Um, we just order flour on a monthly basis in bulk mm -hmm. and they give us wholesale pricing and they also will deliver for free. Right now we meet them at Campbell's Nutrition mm -hmm. um, or arranged delivery if it works out better with our schedules for them. And the next um, local producer that we worked with was Clear Creek Orchard Jam. Uh, Teresa and Martin, the couple that own this company is amazing. Um, I just can't speak highly enough of them. For us, this really, again, was this relationship was born out of a need. Um, pie bird pies, we, we use um, this jam in our hand pies. Mm -hmm. um, and when I first thought about hand pies, I thought that they would be like a, a quick little easy thing that we would do for farmer's market. Um, I did not think that we'd be making dozens and dozens of them like we are as quickly as we have been. So when we started Pie Bird Pies, we were making all of our jam um, from scratch ourselves, yeah. and that quickly became untenable for us. So I wanted to find a local jam maker who we could uh, use for mm -hmm. our hand pies. And Clear Creek Orchard, their jam is just, it's really delicious. It's not too sweet, mm -hmm. really high quality fruit. Um, and it's just really, 
like retains the freshness of those fruits. And again, Teresa and Martin, um, I just called them and I talked to Teresa, kind of told her about who we are um, and that we wanted to use their jam. We'd eaten it as just as consumers beforehand and really loved it. So it was an easy choice for us. And they do free delivery when you buy in bulk. So we buy at least four cases of jam at a time. Um, and yeah, they're super, super easy to work with. They're just lovely people. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Chelsea, I know, also uses Clear Creek Orchard uh, jam for her sourdough donuts. So mm -hmm. I know other uh, folks in the group are starting to use them a little bit yeah. too. They're so awesome. They're yeah. great. And I think, um, oh gosh, I'm blanking on her name. Is that Mallory? Mallory sells Clear Creek Orchard jam at Des Moines Mercantile. So mm -hmm. I think they're definitely a, a local small business favorite. And and yeah, they're, they are wonderful. And I think that's been, uh, we've really enjoyed working with them. Yeah. One thing I was also going to throw in for early morning harvest has been that, you know, one of the little ways that I think we've, we've really appreciated that relationship, for example, is that they put Kristen's flour in 25 pound bags for her. So she doesn't have to further throw out her back by, um, Real. by trying to lift those 50 pound bags of flour and yeah so it's you know it's um it's really great how you know there's like that individual care because it's really a relationship that we formed like with them as businesses but also as people and so mm -hmm. they understand that like yeah we can't necessarily be throwing around 50 pound bags of flour I mean Kristen can't I maybe can but <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now the difficult part of source, sourcing local. I think the number one question we get um, or thing that I've talked about with other folks and other bakers is just expense. And it definitely, mm -hmm. I think, is, uh, is a hurdle. So we'll just talk a little bit about how we navigate this. I mean, I think first and foremost, we build this into the cost of doing our business. Yeah. And so our prices reflect um the price of using local ingredients. And since it's something that we value, um, it's not hard to talk to our customers about why we source locally. And I, we talked a little bit of some, somebody in the chat was talking about getting pushback at farmer's market on prices. And that happens to us too. And I really have no problem telling people like that our prices are what they are because um, pie is a lot of labor. And the ingredients are expensive and that's why we mm -hmm. price how we do and yeah we're just we're not selling store-bought pies so and you all like have i've eaten have been thankful and lucky enough to have eaten a lot of your baked goods and they are incredible and you should not be afraid to price them accordingly yeah but i mean i think a lot of us like you can sit down and say how much cost am i putting into this just in terms of raw ingredients and like with pies, for example, like butter is expensive. Fruit is expensive. We put a lot of fruit in our pies. And so, um, you know, it's like being realistic that if we charged $15 for a pie, like we wouldn't be making anything. Yeah. So yeah, I barely mean, anything. or yeah. barely anything. So, um, I mean, I think some of it is just being straight with people about like, the real cost of of food when it's on a small scale mm -hmm. and when it's made and purchased from people who are being paid a living wage and treat their workers well <laughs> yeah and follow yeah. business practices that you are okay thinking about mm -hmm. um i mean i think there's a lot of things that uh yeah there's it's it gets complicated really quickly, but for us, like it's a matter of values and, and making a product that we feel we can stand behind. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in terms of finding creative ways to offset higher costs, um, this really comes through, I think, again, building those relationships with your suppliers. We're not really, we're not talking about negotiating lower prices because we really work to build those relationships on mutual respect. Mm -hmm. And we respect our producers' um, time and labor too. So I don't expect them to like necessarily like 
give Mm -hmm. us a big discount or anything like that. Like we're all small business owners. We need to be real about our costs of doing business. Mm -hmm. Um, But um, I do also think there are a lot of suppliers where if you buy in bulk, they might be willing to give you wholesale prices. Like we do that for flour and jam, Mm -hmm. or there are a lot of great local businesses that give discounts um, to small business owners or restaurants Mm -hmm. like Allspice uh, Des Moines gives a discount. You just have to tell them about your business. Um, Ingersoll Wine and Spirits gives a business discount, um, which we found because sometimes we cook with, we cook with booze in our pies. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and I think the biggest thing to remember um, that I have to remember constantly as somebody who really likes to do things to 110% and struggles with perfectionism is that it's not like an all- it's not all or nothing. And I think it's okay to recognize like that you're not, you're probably, I mean, we do not use a hundred percent local ingredients. I wish we could, that's the pie in the sky ideal, but we just do the best we can. Um, and we make the best decisions we can, and we continue to try to do better uh, every day, but crank that back just a little bit. We're getting on to the next slide. Oh, sorry just, you know, the, the slide manager here. Uh, We, one thing I was going to say too, was in terms of getting creative. uh, One thing we also do is try to find some ways that if an ingredient is expensive or in lesser supply, like we try to put it in something where that bears the cost a little bit better. Yeah. An example of this would be like, we were able to get uh, black raspberries and blackberries from Radiate Des Moines and Urban Farm here this summer, but we couldn't get a lot of the blackberries or raspberries. So we really wanted to like highlight them in, uh, we we did gluts and um, same with like gooseberries, just some like specialty ingredients where we ended up putting them in gluts because we could get them to more people that way. And Mm -hmm. um, for us, that's one of our products where we have a a higher return on the cost. Mm -hmm. And it also just like gives us more freedom, I think, to play with maybe some more like out there or creative recipes as well. So yeah, yeah. And it, I think, um, or we'll try like mixing, you know, if black raspberries are six or seven dollars a pound to buy them locally, like we'll mix them with another fruit that's maybe a little bit less expensive or Mm -hmm. Or yeah, put them in something where the cost, the our return is a little bit higher, so that we're still making a decent profit. Yeah. So or just like make it a specialty item and charge accordingly. Like we do right now, we're doing mm-hmm. a lot of like mm-hmm. cheddar crusted gluts for like apple and pear gluts, um, because cheese is delicious, and we had to figure out how to put it in pie. <laughs> um, but definitely. that's definitely more expensive, so we just we charge more for those gluts and they're just a specialty seasonal item. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that again, comes back to communication. We try to be like really upfront about this is why we're charging a little bit more for this particular item. And people for the most part have been like totally fine with that, that they understand that some fruits are more expensive or if we're Mm -hmm. adding like nuts or cheese or something very, that's like maybe kind of special, it does impact the price of the final product. But getting back to the the question of doing everything 110%. uh, Sourcing some locally is better than none. And I think something that we ask ourselves are what ingredients are the most important to what you're making? Where is a product where you're really going to taste that difference or what local ingredients make you excited? Um, And I mean, I just think that's where a lot of creativity Mm -hmm. comes from for us. Um, And then thinking about questions like if you can't get an ingredient locally, how can you make a sourcing decision that you feel good about? Um, For example, for our gluten-free pies, we use almond flour, but I can't get almond flour locally. So we buy it at Costco and Costco treats their workers well and pays fair wages. So that's, yeah, it's a big corporation and it's not buying like through a local small business, but at least it's choosing a business that we can uh, stand behind. Yeah. Although as soon as like Almond Growers of Des Moines opens up, we'll be, we'll be there. (laughs) Um, Yeah. And 
I, I think going back to like talking about where you taste the difference. I mean, like Kristen said, that's like, I know when we're talking to people, if it's something we're really excited about, that's like that excitement is it's infectious and even a mask can't stop it. Um, <laughs> it's poor word choice. I'm sorry. I like have a, a daily total of dad jokes I have to meet. Um, that is, but just that being said, like, um, you know, it's again, it's like that human connection that like somebody's buying from you. Okay. They want to, they want to share in your excitement about what you're making. Um, I think it's also important to think about, uh, to think beyond food for sourcing locally. Like if you're looking to get swag uh, printed, you could use Sign Garage or another local printer. Um, and so we've listed, I do want to throw out at the Des Moines Stamp Company. Yeah. If you need to make, if you need to brand like bags or packaging, that's what we use their stamps and they're great and they're super easy to work with. You can think about it in terms of even hiring a local artist or graphic designer to help you work on your brand or logo if that's something that you're wanting. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, we can talk about different examples of that. We used mm -hmm. a local restaurant supplier, Trimark Hockenberg, to buy a baker's bench, which is what our laptop is sitting on now because our dining room is just pie central and doesn't have a real table anymore. But they were great to work with and they offered uh, free delivery and assembly. I think it was the first time they'd ever delivered to a home baker and it was an experience for all of us, but there's mm -hmm. just, there's a lot of great local, uh, businesses to work with in Des Moines. Yeah. So, um, this is, and this, we won't get into too much right now, unless like people have specific questions, but just for the purposes of like a little bit more about where we get our, our various ingredients, this is kind of a, a more comprehensive list. So we wanted just to, in our last five minutes, to open up the discussion and see if anybody has questions, if there's something you're looking for in particular locally. Um, we also can go back to the list if like people want to take a look at that. Um, we just know that this is like one of the one of the things we really enjoy talking to other home bakers about. Yep. Ah. Oh, and there's our contact info, but now it's gone. Yeah, I think this group, especially the bakers in the group that we know, they've been, it's just been great to be able to ask people where they're getting other ingredients and if they can make an introduction or something like that. So mm -hmm. yeah, I guess we're just curious if you all, what kind of local ingredients you're using. Oh, that's a good question. How far out do you consider local? That is a good question. I mean, I think I tend to think about that as with like within about an hour of Des Moines. That is like not a hard and fast rule. And I mean, I also tend to think there are some products like we use Cedar Ridge bourbon or Templeton rye whiskey in some of our pies. And those certainly aren't local to Des Moines, but mm -hmm. they're local to Iowa. Um, I, yeah, I don't, we don't have like a mile uh, set on that, but I do think we work with a number of farmers uh, or producers that are within about an hour drive of Des Moines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think maybe one thing that you could think about is like, are you within a delivery radius yeah. for somewhere? Because for instance, like, I don't know if anybody's ever looked at buying like large quantities of fruit, but that's like something where ordering, like ordering a pallet of frozen cherries is like, it's, uh, it gets very expensive very quickly. And so, I mean, if we're talking environmental impact, like sometimes considering how far something has to travel is also uh, a local consideration. And so, um, you know, and that does factor into cost. Like, is it affordable? For that? Um, so, yeah. 
So yeah, a lot of the places on this list, like they're either carried at local grocery stores or we're able to pay a low or free, free cost to get the products delivered to us. One thing that I just want to mention is that um, if you're going to go with like a bulk food producer like Cisco or Lafredo or and then Christina can speak on the specialty person that she uses, but Cisco does try to source locally. So I use Cisco for my rosemary and they are they use a farm uh, out of Grinnell. So if you're if, if you're passionate about socially I try to search regionally as much as I can, especially for flowers, for bread flowers. Um, but there are a lot of options in Iowa. I source all of my flour through Breadtopia, which is in Fairfield, Iowa, and they do all regionally sourced grains. And so Iowa, Wisconsin, Illinois, so that they're trying to bring in. Um, but most of these places, a lot of them, if they're larger, do have um, wholesale counts and they want to work with small bakers and small businesses like they don't want to exclude you from like the list they're, they're not I've never been asked like how much outside of Cisco <laughs> they've never asked how much I make a year um, but you know a lot of bigger bakeries will allow you to kind of like I work with a couple people who just let me order rosemary through Cisco through them once a week. And so don't be afraid to ask your community for help to source locally. People yeah. want to be helpful. And that was one thing that like I wanted to say too, if anyone wants to talk to us specifically about ingredients or going in like on a bigger bulk order, mm -hmm. we're, we're more than happy to do that and kind of figure out that. So we have our contact info at the end of the presentation and really feel free to shoot us a message or an email. Uh, we're happy to talk anytime. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If anybody was ever like, gosh, I would love to buy this thing, but but like, you know, let's let's split 80 pounds of strawberries or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it goes it goes a long way because maybe you can then you can get the bulk the bulk price. So definitely. So is that time for us okay well thank you all so much yeah thank you and again if you have any questions don't hesitate to reach out we're mm -hmm. always happy to we're always happy to chat so yeah thank you thank you <laughs>